Let's take a look at how the groupings we made might be coded into HTML and which elements belong in which group to complete the structure of our page. I'm going to go ahead and add a new file. Um, it doesn't really matter what it's called because we're just kind of practicing. And we're going to need to start every HTML page with an HTML shell or skeleton that every page uses. In VS Code, you can there's a shortcut with an exclamation mark enter that will bring up that shell for you. I'm going to quickly change the title here to something that fits a little bit better. And remember that everything that we want on, to show up on the screen of our page is going to be inside of the body tags. So that's where we're going to start translating what's here on the wireframe to what we want on the, the page. So starting at the top of the wireframe, we have the group that contains the logo and the navigation. This is not going to change from page to page on our website. The semantic element that goes with this group is called header. So we're going to go ahead and type in header. There. Now remember, semantic means that we're, we're going to try to pick an element that describes what its content is. And it's always good to refer back to somewhere like um, W3 Schools and maybe look up semantic elements to kind of get an idea of what ones you might have options from. For example, here's section. It's usually a grouping. It typically has a heading in it. Um, there's articles that could be self-contained content. They could be independent of the entire website and still be able to, to make sense. So there's these different elements, so it's nice to become familiar with, with those as you're trying to decide which elements to use. Okay, so header is going to contain whatever stays the same at the top of the page, every page. Then there is a semantic main element that kind of means all the middle or main content that's going to change from page to page. Okay, then we always have a footer at the bottom of the page. Again, this is not going to change from page to page on our website. Now notice I've also started indenting. So we have header, main, and footer indented in from body because they are children of body and we'll keep indenting as we nest different elements as we go. So inside of our header we see that there's probably a logo of some sort and three or four links there. So we can start deciding, is there a semantic element that holds a logo? Yes, that's the image tag. And we're going to just give it a quick placeholder text. It will size it with these numbers. So I'm going to give it a nice little square size. And put animals just so we get a safe picture. And we'll give it some alternative text. Maybe like Okay, so that's going to show our logo. Now a lot of the times, just for ease of centering or different things like that, you'll see maybe a, a non-semantic element like div with the class of logo box, or maybe this might be for a reason of a grid later. Um, but sometimes you, you'll see these kind of images nested inside of a div like this, and it really wouldn't matter maybe either way but we'll go ahead and put that inside of there. Now there's no title, there's no real content that I can think of that would be any more semantic, so I'm going to use a kind of a non-semantic uh, wrapper with a div there. Then we have the four links which were, are always going to be in a nav element, so that's for navigation. So that is a very semantic tag. It does describe what's inside of it and that we do have four links that are going to be hypertext reference anchor tags and always usually the first one on the left will be the home page which will be index.html and then you'd have three more they're not all going to be the home page we don't know what these pages are so maybe we'll just throw in a hashtag for now which won't let it it'll just stay on the same page and we'll just throw in a couple of placeholders here and we'll fill in this later when we know exactly what pages those are. But our header is now has all the elements that we need. It's not going to look like that. In fact, let's take a look at it right now. And you'll see that it does not look 
like the wireframe whatsoever because we are not worrying about CSS right now. We're just getting elements on the page, so it's not going to look like wireframe, but we're using the wireframe just to get the proper elements in HTML. So keep that in mind as we're, we're going along here. Alright, so the main section has, looks like a banner area with maybe some text over the top of it. And I can tell there's probably more than one banner because it's got this like previous and next um, angle bracket here that shows that they can scroll through or maybe it's on a timer or something. So I know there's probably going to be more than one banner. And then we have what looks like maybe a product gallery here. In fact, I think it even says that here, right there. So we know it's probably listing like eight of their products. Let's go ahead and start off with that banner area. Now again, I'm going to use kind of an unsemantic tag here because the whole entire banner to me doesn't really fit in any of those semantic categories. So I'm just going to call it banner box and I'm going to put a box around the whole grouping. Again, later this might be for CSS purposes or whatever we might want to do. Then inside that, we I'm going to assume maybe that we have three different banner images. So I can come in here, and this time I kind of think it might fit into section. Because section, I'm going to give it a class of banner. So this is the individual banner. Because sections do have a heading in there, and it looks like we do have like a banner title. So I kind of like that. And they're all going to kind of go together. So, and it depends. Maybe they don't go together at all. So maybe you could use article or div. But I'm going to assume that they kind of are related. So I'm going to use section. And they do probably have a big banner image behind them is what I'm guessing. This time it's going to be a banner. So I'm going to make it very wide and a little taller than our logo. And then I'll go ahead, and this time I'll say alts, alternative text, and description, which would actually be a description if I knew what it was. Okay. So there's our image. I also assume there's probably some sort of H1 or H2 here, along with maybe a paragraph. So I'm going to go ahead and put something like that in. But this is going to get repeated however many banners we have that are going to scroll through. So maybe there's three, right? So then I would come in here and make sure I change that. The pictures would be different for each one of them as well. But that's the idea. So I'm looking at this and I'm deciding what kind of elements I want to use for that. Okay, now let's look at the product gallery. Again, the whole container might just be a div. And I'll go ahead and call that product gallery. And inside of there, again, we have a very similar thing, a picture with a maybe a title of the product and maybe a description of the product. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing I did up here, and maybe I'll use sections again because they do have a header in there. But this time it's not going to be a banner. It's going to be the product itself. And this time I probably want a smaller picture. It's not as big as the banner, so maybe I'd want 250 by 250. And this time it's the product title and the product description. Okay, and then maybe this would also change. Okay, and there's actually eight of those, so I can go in here, copy that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And of course I'd go through and change all the numbering to fit, and, you know, each one of them have their own picture, their own description, their own title. Okay, then we finally get to the footer section, and here we see we probably have like maybe an H4 and a paragraph three times, and then maybe this one has a H4, but it has three little images in it. So I'm not going to go ahead and go, keep going because we've already got a long video here, but you get the idea. This is how I'm going to go about kind of using this wireframe to make this page. Now again, remember, it is not going to look pretty. It will not look like that wireframe. I mean, this is what it's looking like right now. Let me move this over so we can see the text. We've got our navigation our three banners, our products, 
and it doesn't look anything like that wireframe. And you, you, it won't until we get all the CSS done. But we do have the foundation through this HTML. And that's how we're going to look at looking at a wireframe and creating the HTML from it.